In this Finance Basics 8 tutorial from Teach Excel, I'm going to show you how to find the future value of an amount of money that includes a principal plus annuity payments over the years. So by now I'm assuming that you know how to do the um, basic future value calculation within Excel um, by hand, but most importantly also with this formula right here. So now we're going to change it just a little bit. but. Just remember this is the entire formula with all of the arguments in case you need to reference it. So the question for this tutorial is, or it goes like this, right? You have $6,000 in the bank and you plan to put $1,000 more into your bank account at the end of every year for the next 10 years. The interest rate on the account is 3.75%. So how much money are you going to have in 10 years? All right, so let's start our future value for formula or function equals FV, open parentheses. Now let's start to find all of the arguments, right? So the rate is really easy for this one because the rate is given in years as well as the periods. So 3.75% per year. So that's going to be our rate. Now remember, you always enter that as a decimal. So you don't enter 3.75, but instead 0.0375 comma now we need the number of periods this example the periods are all in years so we don't have to do any multiplication for this simply just 10 for the number of years 10 years comma now we need the payment well remember it's a principal plus annuity problem so the annuity is the payment and the payment is how much money we are either putting in or taking out every single period. Well, for this period or for this problem, we're going to be putting a thousand dollars into the account at the end of every year. So we put one thousand here for payment. But now we have to remember that we also have a present value. So comma, the present value here is the current amount of money that we have within the bank account and we have six thousand dollars already in the account so our present value how much it's worth today right now is six thousand dollars so six zero 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 now this is all that we need if however you are going to put the thousand dollars into the bank account at the beginning of every year then what you would need to do is to put a one for the type argument so you do comma one. By default, the type is set to zero. And all that means is that the function assumes that you're putting the money in at the end of the year. But remember, if you put it in at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the period, you put a one in for the type argument. That's so very important to remember. For this problem though, we do not need anything in because by default, it assumes you're putting it in at the end of the period. So when you're done, hit enter. And it tells you that we're going to have $20,538.10 in 10 years. Now, it's important to note a few things. One, this number is negative. Why? Well, it's because we did not make the present value and the payment numbers negative. So let me just show you how, to, how you should fix that, right? Negative for the payment, negative for the present value. Hit enter get the positive number. But here's the problem. It's very easy to forget to put negative numbers in there. So if you're just solving a problem like this, you may forget to put negative numbers in there. Or if you have a setup like this over here and you use cell references for all of these arguments. So each one of these arguments is a cell reference. So instead of 0.0375, I simply selected the cell with 0.0375. So if you did that, you may forget to put the payment and present value numbers in as negative. Or you may forget to put one of them in as negative. Now the reason they're negative is because it's cash outflow. It's assuming that the present value is something like this. You are going to buy a bond for $6,000. Well to buy it, it costs you $6,000. So it's a cash outflow of six grand. So that's why it would be negative. The payments are also cash outflows because you're putting a thousand dollars into something else. So that's essentially why they're negative. But check out this formula here. So you need a negative sign in front of both. What if we forget to put it in front of the present value? We get a little over 3,000. So obviously an incorrect answer. 
What if we just forget to put it in front of the payment? Same thing, big problem. So what I like to do if I'm going to be working in um, functions like the future value function in Excel, you're not sure if someone, um, how they're going to write their formulas, right? But you know that if you leave the negative signs off, it'll give you the correct answer, simply a negative answer. So what you can do is go ahead and put a negative sign in front of the future value function. Now this is not always the best thing to do, especially if you have huge formulas with nested functions you may not want to do this, right? You may not want to put the negative sign right there. In that case, you would want to put negative signs in front of each one. But I'm just showing you um, some of the potential problems you could run into and some of the different ways you could set it up. Anyway, though, that is how you would solve this future value problem within Excel.